Suppose someone asked you to explain percent numbers. What would you say? Suppose someone asked you to explain percent problems. How would you do it? And suppose someone asked you to explain the difference between the two. How would you answer them? I know I couldn't do it, Mr. Cox. So let's see if we can answer those questions and others about percent numbers and percent problems. When you first learn about fraction, decimal, and percent arithmetic, you usually learn about them in that order. Fraction arithmetic first, decimal arithmetic next, then percent arithmetic. I'm going to assume that you already know fraction and decimal arithmetic, but it is not necessary to know these things in order to understand the concepts of percents. Let me list out the things that we'll be learning in this video. First, we will learn the basic definition of percent numbers. Next, we will learn what the connection is between percents and other basic numbers. Then we'll learn what a percent problem is and how to identify the different parts of that percent problem. And finally, we will learn how to use a formula so that we can find the missing numbers in those percent problems. Now let's get started. I'm ready, Mr. C. Let's get this show on the road. Let me put up a number on the board. What is this object? Well, that's easy. That's a percent number. Correct. And you should be able to read it. Well, that's easy too. It's 25%. Again, that's correct. But before we go any further, let me ask you another question. What, if anything, do these three types of numbers have in common with each other? Well, they're all parts of numbers, aren't they? That's partially correct. Bruno, aren't they all pieces of something? Yes, but they have much more in common than that. You may or may not know that 25% is the same as the fraction 1 fourth. Yes, it is. And you may or may not know that numbers such as 50% is the same as 1 half and 75% is the same as 3 quarters. Why is that? It's probably just something we memorize from seeing advertisements. All right, let's see if we can figure out just what the basic definition of a percent number is and how it's connected to the other basic numbers. Let's look at the number 25% again. Look at the percent symbol. That's really just shorthand notation for the word percent. Now let's break up the word into two parts, per and cent. When you talk about things like miles per gallon, you can write it as you state it like this. Or miles per hour would be written like this. Or two dollars per pound would be written this way. Or feet per second would be written like this. You'll notice that the word per is written as a slash symbol or the fraction line. So let's replace the word per with the fraction slash line. Now what's the definition of cent? Doesn't cent mean pennies? Yes, that's one definition. It also means 100. Now let me replace the word cent with the number 100. You might recognize this thing I've just written. It's the fraction 2500s, Mr. Sleep. We've just rewritten 25% as the fraction 2500s. One more step is that you can reduce this fraction to one quarter by dividing both top and bottom by the common number 25. This is the reason that the number 25% can be rewritten as the fraction one fourth. Just remember that the word percent can literally be read as per hundred or per one hundred. Now let's take the number 75%. If you apply what I've just shown you, how would you rewrite this number? Well, you'd write the 75 with the fraction line, then because cent means 100, you'd write that in the bottom. And what do you wind up with? The fraction 75 hundredths. Yes, and can that be reduced? Yes, it can, by dividing the top and the bottom by the common number 25, which leaves 3 quarters. So 75% can be rewritten as the fraction 3 fourths. What about the number 50%? Let me give this a shot. Since per cent is the same as per 100, we have 50 per 100, or the fraction 50 hundredths. 50 hundredths can be reduced by the common divisor 50, which reduces to the fraction 1 half. So you now know why these three percent numbers can be read as fraction numbers. Now that's pretty interesting. And just what can we conclude from this? Well, we can always write a percent number as a fraction simply by writing the number over 100. Is that always the case, Mr. Cox? Can every percent be rewritten as a fraction? Yes, they can. Now, fractional percents, such as 12.5%, and decimal numbers like 56 and 75 hundredths percent, 
are a little more complicated to rewrite as fractions, and we will look at those numbers later. But first, let's talk a little further about these three basic numbers. Before we start, I want you to memorize the order in which these are written, because it will help you to remember the steps to take when you change these from one to another. Look at this number again and tell me what it is. Well that's easy, we just said a minute ago it was the fraction one-fourth. Yes I did, but first let me ask you what this word is. Well that's record. No, isn't that record? Okay, which is it? Well now that I think about it, I guess it could be both. That's right. The word has two different meanings. It could be the noun, record, or the verb, record. So it has two distinct different meanings depending on the context you're using it in. Now let's look at this object again. It actually has at least four different definitions. It could be interpreted as a fraction one-fourth, or it could be interpreted as a ratio one to four, or it could be interpreted as a probability one chance out of four chances of something occurring. Or, it could be interpreted as a division problem, 1 divided by 4. Let's say I want to change this fraction into a decimal. That means I have to do some work, some arithmetic operation. So that means I have to interpret this as a division problem, 1 divided by 4. You write the division house alongside the bottom and imagine tilting the fraction so that the top number slides off into the division house. That way you'll always remember which number goes outside the division house and which one goes inside. It will never be the other way around. The next step is that when you're dividing a larger number into a smaller number, you have to write the smaller number as a decimal number and place some zeros behind the decimal point. We'll use two zeros for our examples. You could use more or less if you wanted to, and sometimes you will need more, other times you won't. Now place your decimal point in your answer directly above the decimal point in your problem and perform regular division. 4 divides into 10 at most 2 times with a remainder of 2. Bring down your 0 and perform your next division. 4 divides into 20 exactly 5 times with no remainder. As you can see, I've just turned the fraction 1 fourth into the decimal 25 hundredths. Now let's change 3 quarters and 1 half. To change 3 quarters into a decimal, we must divide 4 into 3. Again, write the 3 as a decimal number and carry it out to 2 places. Then place a decimal point in the answer directly above the decimal point in your problem and start dividing. 4 divides into 30 at most 7 times with a remainder of 2. Bring down the remaining 0 and perform the next division. 4 divides into 20 exactly 5 times with no remainder. We've just turned the fraction 3 quarters into the decimal number 75 hundredths. Now for the fraction 1 half. You're going to divide 2 into 1. Write 1 as a decimal number. Place two zeros behind the decimal point and place the decimal point in your answer. Now two divides into ten exactly five times with no remainder. As you can see, we've changed a fraction one half into the decimal five tenths. These are the steps you perform anytime you want to change a fraction into a decimal. Now what if we want to go a step further and change these decimals into percents? Here's where remembering this order will help you. You probably vaguely remember something about moving a decimal point in some direction some number of places when changing decimals to percents and percents back to decimals. The trouble was remembering which direction and how many places. Yes, I vaguely remember something about that. Me too, Mr. Sling! Okay, let's look at our board again. You'll notice that if we're moving from decimals to percents, we're moving to the right. So if we want to change 25 hundredths to a percent, we move the decimal two places to the right and attach a percent symbol. It will always be two places either to the right or to the left, depending on which direction you're going. Now when our decimal point winds up at the end of a whole number, you can drop it. So as you can see, the fraction one-fourth can be written as a decimal 25 hundredths, which can then be written as a percent 25 percent. What this means is that fraction, decimal, and percent numbers are actually just three different ways to write the same thing. So how would you change 75 hundredths to a percent? Irving? Well, that's easy. You move the decimal two places to the right and attach a percent symbol. And you can drop the decimal point when you're finished because it's at the end of a whole number. How about five tenths? Well, I'm guessing that you'd have to add a zero to the five tenths in order to move the decimal point two places to the right. Then you attach a percent symbol and drop the decimal point because it's at the end of a whole number. Now let's look at fractional percent numbers and decimal percent numbers. 
How would you change 33 and one third percent into a fraction? Remember the rule. You write the number over 100 and you get 33 and a third divided by 100. That doesn't look right, Mr. C. That's because it's a complex fraction. And in order to simplify it, you have to rewrite it. You must rewrite this division problem as a standard fraction division problem like this. If you've already had fraction arithmetic, you should know how to do this. We must do three things first before we can perform this arithmetic. First, we have to rewrite 33 and a third as the improper fraction 100 over 3. Next, we turn the division into multiplication and flip over the number on the right hand side. But before we can do that, we have to write it over 1, so when we flip it over, it becomes 1 over 100. Before we multiply, we can cross cancel the 100s, then we multiply the tops across and the bottoms across to get the answer 1 third. So 33 and a third percent can be rewritten as a fraction 1 third. That was a lot of work to do, Mr. C. Yes, it was, Irving. But those are the steps necessary to change fractional percent numbers into fractions. Now let's do the next one. 12 and a half percent. Bruno, what are the steps necessary to change this number into a fraction? You write the 12 and a half over 100, then you rewrite it as a fraction division problem. Next, you rewrite 12 and a half as the improper fraction 25 over 2. Turn it into multiplication and write the 100 over 1 and flip it over to 1 over 100. What next, Irving? You can reduce the 25 and the 100 by 25, which leaves 1 half times 1 fourth. And multiplying that gives you the answer 1 eighth. 12 and a half percent can be changed to the fraction 1 eighth. Now what about the decimal percent numbers, such as 8 and 5 tenths percent? I imagine you write the number over 100 like this. But I'm not sure what to do next. If you multiply the top of the fraction by 10, you can get rid of the decimal number. But if you multiply the top by 10, you must also multiply the bottom by 10 to get 1,000. 85 over 1,000 can be reduced by the common number 5, which leaves 17 two hundredths. So 8 and 5 tenths percent can be changed to the fraction 17 two hundredths. Now what about 20 and 25 hundredths percent? You write 20 and 25 hundredths over 100, and I'm guessing that to get rid of the decimal number in the top, you'd have to multiply it by 100 to move the decimal place over two places. And you must also multiply the bottom by 100, which is now 10,000, or 2,025 over 10,000. The top and the bottom can be reduced by 25, which leaves 81 four hundredths. Yes, the answer is 81 over 400. Well done. Now let's change some percents to decimals, then the fractions to see how to make sure we understand how these are connected to each other. If you want to change 25% to a decimal, you know you have to move the decimal two places in a certain direction. You should also know that every whole number has a decimal point associated with it. If you don't see the decimal point in the number, it's understood that it's at the end of the number. You can see that if we're going from percents to decimals, we're moving to the left. We move the decimal two places to the left, and it winds up in front of the 2, and we drop the percent symbol. And how do you read that number? 25 hundredths, Mr. C. And now we want to change that to a fraction number. Because it's hundredths, we write the 25 over 100. Now this can be reduced. Yes, the top and the bottom can be divided by the common number 25, which leaves 1 fourth. What about the next one, 8 percent? It's understood that the decimal point is behind the 8. In order to move the decimal point two places to the left, we have to add a zero, then move it two places, which gives us the decimal number eight hundredths. How do you change that into a fraction? Since it's in hundredths, we write it as eight over one hundred, then reduce the top and bottom by the common number four, which leaves the fraction two twenty-fifths. Yes, how about the next one, Bruno? In order to move the decimal point two places to the left, we have to add two zeros to the front of this number, then move the decimal point and drop the percent symbol. And how do you read that? It's 65 ten thousandths. And to change it to a fraction, because it's in the ten thousandths place, we write the number 65 over 10,000. What's the common number in this fraction? It's 5, and it reduces to the fraction 13 two thousandths. Now what about 8 and 3 quarter percent? Let me give this a shot. The decimal is understood to be directly after the whole number. In order to move it two places to the left, we have to add a zero to the front of the number, 
move the decimal point and drop the percent symbol. That number is read as eight and three quarter hundredths. Yes, it is. What next? Since the place value is hundreds, we have to write the number as eight and three quarters over 100. This is a complex fraction, and in order to simplify it, we have to perform fraction division. What next? First, rewrite the fraction 8 and 3 quarters as the improper fraction 35 over 4. Then turn it to multiplication, write the 100 over 1, and flip it over. We can reduce the 35 into 100 by the common divisor 5, which leaves 7 over 4 times 1 over 20. And that equals the fraction 7 over 80. So 8 and 3 quarter percent is the same as the fraction 7 80ths. You should now understand how these simple numbers are connected to each other. And again, if you haven't had fractions or are a bit rusty at them, don't worry about that. You should still be able to understand how to do the percent problems. What we did in the previous lesson was to explain percent numbers, explain how they're related to other numbers, and how to change them back and forth. It's important to note here that those were not percent problems. A percent problem is a situation where you have to find a missing piece in a problem, usually a word problem, that involves a percent number. Let me introduce the percent problem. Then I'll show you the various steps involved in solving the three different ways a problem could be presented. Let's suppose I own a clothing store and I hire you as a sales clerk. I tell you that I'm going to pay you a 25% commission on everything you sell. At the end of the day, you know that you've sold a total of $60 worth of merchandise. What is your cut? Let's write this out in arithmetic form. You have $60 and you want to find 25% of that $60. We now have a percent problem to solve. I'm going to give you the answer, which is $15. We no longer have a percent problem because all the pieces are there. Nothing is missing. Now you could also read this as one fourth of $60 is equal to $15. Since 25% is the same as the fraction 1 fourth, which would make this a fraction problem. Or you could read this as 25 hundredths of $60 is equal to $15. Since 25% is also the same as the decimal number 25 hundredths, which would make this a decimal problem. But since we're working with percent numbers and percent problems, we'll stick to using percent numbers. I want you to pay attention to the various numbers that make up this statement. In a percent problem, there is a total number we started with, a percent number of that total we wanted to find, and a part number we found of that total. So you can see a percent problem is made up of three different numbers, a total number, a percent number, and a part number. The first step in solving any percent problem is to identify which numbers are present in the problem and which one is missing. Let me now show you a formula that we'll be using to solve for the missing piece in any percent problems. You should memorize this formula and the position of each number. The part number, if it's given in a problem, will always go here. The total number, if it's given in a problem, will always go here. The percent number, if it's given in a problem, will always go here. And this number will always be 100 and it will always go below the percent number. In any percent problem, one of these three numbers will be missing and it will be your job to identify which one is missing, then identify which two are there and plug them into the formula. Now let's go back to our original problem and see how we can use this formula to solve for the missing piece. We had to find 25% of $60. Now we have to identify what numbers are present and plug them into our formula. Which numbers are given, Irving? The percent's there, it's 25%. And where does it fit into our formula? It goes in the upper right hand slot above the 100 number. Now the other number in our problem, which one is it? It's the total number, and it goes below the part number in the lower left hand slot. Correct. And you'll notice that the part number is the one missing in our problem. And it would go in the upper left hand corner if it was given, but that's the one we have to solve for. Once we have our numbers placed in the formula, then we do some simple arithmetic to solve for the missing piece. The steps to solve for the missing number are as follows. Step 1. We multiply the two numbers that are diagonally across from each other, which is the 25 and 60, and we get 1500. Step 2. We take that answer and divide it by the other number left, which is 100. And the answer to that arithmetic is 15, which is the number we are looking for. Now 15 what? What is this answer? Well, if the total we started with is money, 
and we're looking for a piece of that number, the answer has to be money too. So our answer is $15. Let's say we have a slightly different problem. Again, let's say you are that clerk in a clothing store, and only this time I say I'm going to give you 25% of all the sales you make. You didn't get a chance to keep track of your total sales, but I hand you $15 at the end of the day and say that's your cut for the day. You go home and you wonder what the total amount was you sold that day. So here's our problem. Can we figure out how much you sold that day using our formula? We certainly can. All we do is place the numbers that are present in their proper slots. Then do the two simple arithmetic steps to solve for the missing piece. Now show us where the numbers that are present go in the formula. The percent number is there and it goes above the 100 number in the upper right hand slot. Right. What next, Bruno? We place the other number that's given, which happens to be the part, in the upper left hand slot. So which number are we looking for? Which one is missing? The total amount of sales that day, or the total number? Yes, and if it was given, it would go in the lower left hand slot below the part number. Now what do we do first? We look to see which two numbers are diagonally across from each other and multiply them together, which is a 15 times 100, and that equals 1500. What next, Bruno? Then we divide that answer by the other number left, which is 25, and the answer is 60. 60 what? Well, if the part is money, then the total we took that part from also has to be money. Yes, that's $60. Okay, one more example. Back to our clerk problem. Let's suppose that I tell you that I'm going to pay you a percentage of the total sales you make, but I forget to tell you that exact percentage. At the end of the day, you know you've made $60 in total sales. I come up to you and hand you $15 for your cut. You go home and you wonder what the percentage is that you're working on. So here's our problem. Can you find out what that is using our formula? We sure can, Mr. C. Okay, tell me how. You first plug in the numbers that are given into the formula. The part is given, which is 15, and it goes in the upper left-hand slot. The total is given, which is 60, and it goes in the lower left-hand slot. And the percent number is what's missing here. So far, so good. Now what do you do next, Bruno? You stop and look to find the two numbers that are diagonal from each other and multiply them together, which is 15 times 100. Then you divide that answer by 60, which is 25. So what was that number you just found? It was the percent number we were looking for, which is 25%. Very good. Now let's do several more examples to make sure we understand this formula and know how to use it. First, let me ask you what kind of problem this is. What do you mean, Mr. Cox? When you have a problem, you look at the kinds of numbers that make up the problem. That'll give you a clue as to what sort of things you'll need to know to solve the problem. Well, since it has a percent number in it, I'm guessing that it's a percent problem. Correct. That number determines that it is a percent problem, and you're probably going to have to use this formula to solve it. Now that you've determined it's a percent problem, which numbers are given and which number is missing? The percent number is there and the total number is there. Okay, now plug them into the formula and figure out which numbers to multiply together. The 24 goes in the lower left hand slot because that's a total number. And the 75 goes in the upper right hand slot above the 100 because that's a percent number. And the part number is missing. Alright, so which two numbers get multiplied together? The two numbers diagonal from each other are the 24 and 75. So we multiply those together and get 1800. Next, we divide that answer by the other number which is 100. And the answer to that is 18. And 18 is which number? It's the part number. The part of 24 we were looking for. Correct. 75% of 24 is 18. Now what if this was our problem? Which number is missing and how would we solve for it? The total number is missing. So you plug in the numbers that are there into the slots in the formula, then solve it. Yes. Tell me where the numbers go. 75 goes above the 100 in the upper right hand slot. The 18 is a part and it goes in the upper left hand slot. And the total is missing. Now which two numbers do we multiply together first? Again, you look to see which two numbers are diagonal from each other and multiply them together, which is the 18 and the 100. The answer is 1800. Then you divide the 1800 by the other number, 75, which leaves 24. So 75% of 24 is 18. 
Okay, now suppose we have this problem. What do you do first? You first decide which numbers are given and which one is missing. The percent number is missing here and the part and total are given. Then you plug the numbers into the formula and solve for the missing one. The 18 is a part and goes in the upper left hand slot. The 24 is a total and it goes in the lower left hand slot. Okay, go ahead. Again, the 18 and the 100 are the two numbers diagonal from each other and you multiply them together to get 1800. Then you divide that answer by the other number left, which is 24, and the answer to that is 75. 75 what? We were looking for the missing percent number, so the 75 is percent. 75 percent. Yes. Now let's look at percent problems that have fractional percent numbers in them. Let's cover all three ways this problem could occur and how to solve each one. The percent number could be missing, the total number could be missing, or the part number could be missing. Let's do the part missing first. The first step is to identify the numbers present and the one missing and plug them into our formula. The percent number is given, which is 33 and a third percent, and the total number is there, which is 45. We're looking for the part number. Yes. Bruno, tell me where these numbers go in our formula. The 33 and a third goes above the 100 in the upper right hand slot, and the 45 goes in the lower left hand slot. Now stop and look to see which two numbers are diagonal from each other, then multiply them together. The 45 and the 33 and the third are diagonal from each other. Correct. In order to multiply them together, you must know fraction multiplication. When you multiply 45 times 33 and the third, you must first write 45 over 1 so that it's a fraction, and then change 33 and the third to an improper fraction, which is 100 over 3. Now you can reduce the 45 and 3 before you multiply it, which is 1500 over 1, or just 1500. Now you still have one more step to do before you're finished. You must still divide that answer by the 100 left in our formula, and the answer to that is 15. Yes, the part is 15. How about this problem? The percent number is given, which is 33 and a third percent, and the part number is there, which is 15. We're looking for the total number. Right. Does everyone see that? Now place the numbers in the formula. You put the 15 in the upper left hand corner and the 33 and a third in the upper right hand corner. Now stop and find the two numbers diagonal from each other. The 15 and the 100 which multiply together to get 1500. Next you divide that number by the other one left which is 33 and a third. So first you have to write the 1500 over 1 then rewrite 33 and a third as an improper fraction, which is 100 over 3. Next, in fraction division, you must change the problem to multiplication and flip over the fraction on the right hand side. You then reduce the 1500 and the 100 by 100, then multiply. 3 times 15 is 45 over 1, which is just 45. So the total we're looking for is 45. Okay, now suppose we have this problem. Let me do this one. The total number is there, and the part number is there, and the percent number is missing. The 15 goes in the upper left-hand corner, and the 45 goes in the lower left-hand corner below the 15. Which two numbers are diagonal from each other? The 15 and the 100 are diagonal from each other, and they multiply together to get 1500. You divide that answer by the other number left, which is 45. You perform regular division, and when you're finished, you get a remainder of 15 left over. You write this remainder as a fraction 15 over the divisor 45. Now 15 45ths can be reduced to the fraction 1 third. So what is that 33 and a third? Which number were we looking for? The percent number, Mr. Cox. The answer is 33 and a third percent. Now let's look at some percent word problems to see if we can identify the things we need to know to be able to solve them. Suppose we had this word problem. John wants to put down 25% of the stereo he wants to purchase. The stereo costs $240. How much does John have to put down? First of all, what kind of problem is this and how do you determine that? Well, I guess since it has a percent number in it, that'll make it a percent problem. That's correct. This number makes it a percent problem and it means that you're probably going to have to use a percent formula to solve it. Now look carefully at this problem and determine which numbers are given and which one is missing that we have to solve for. 
percent number is there. It's 25 percent. The other number is $240, and that's the total cost of the stereo. John has to put down part of that $240, so it's the part number that we have to solve for. The 25 goes above the 100 in the upper right-hand corner. The 240 goes in the lower left-hand corner. You multiply the 25 times the 240, which is 6,000, and you divide that number by 100, which leaves you with 60. 60 what? What is this answer? Since the 60 is a piece of the $240, the answer is dollars. $60. Correct. John had to put down his $60 deposit on the stereo. Let's take another problem. Frank is trying to save coupons to get a free model airplane. He needs 500 coupons to get the airplane, and he has saved 200 so far. What percent of the total number of coupons has Frank saved so far? Again, how do you determine what kind of problem this is? I'm not sure, Mr. Cox, that's not clear. Do you see the words, what percent? That word makes it a percent problem. And it also tells you that you're looking for the percent number. Now carefully identify the numbers present in the percent problem and place them in our formula. The part is 200 and the total he needs is 500. We're trying to figure out what percent 200 is of 500. Yes. Now do the arithmetic, Bruno, to find the missing number. You multiply 200 times 100 to get 20,000 and divide that by 500 to get the answer 40%. So he saved 40% of the coupons he needs to get the airplane. That's correct. Let's look at one more word problem. Sam has to travel to a writer's convention. He has driven 348 miles towards his destination and that represents 60% of the distance he has to travel. What is the total distance he has to drive? Who wants to do this one? I will. The 348 is the part he's driven so far, and the 60 is a percent number, and we're looking for the total number. Once we place these numbers into the formula, we multiply 348 times 100 to get 34,800. We then divide that number by the other one, which is 60, to get 580. The total distance he has to drive to get to the convention is 580 miles. There are many different ways in which a percent problem can be worded, so it's very important to understand each aspect of the problem so you can properly identify each of its components. I can see that I'm going to have to read carefully if I'm going to get these problems right. Let's look at a different type of percent problem. There are problems where you have to find a rate of increase or a rate of decrease. These are also percent problems in that rate also means percent. So when you see those words, it really means percent of increase or percent of decrease. In these problems, something increased in numerical amount or something decreased in numerical amount. We're looking for the percent of increase or the percent of decrease. So we're looking for a percent number in these problems. The best way to describe this would be through examples. Suppose the price of a computer you wanted to buy went up from $400 to $500. What was the rate at which the price increased? Let me explain the formula that we're going to use to solve these problems. It's just a slight variation of our original formula. The amount of change, or the difference between the two numbers, goes into the upper left-hand slot. And the starting value, or the number you started with, goes into the lower left hand slot. Now let's plug in the numbers. The amount changed from $400 to $500, which is a difference of $100. And this is the number that you place into the upper left hand slot. And the number you started with, the starting value is $400. And this is the number that you place into the lower left hand slot. Now once we've placed our numbers into the formula, the arithmetic is the same as our previous problems. We multiply 100 times 100 to get 10,000, and divide that by the number left, which leaves 25. Since we were looking for the percent, or rate of increase, this number is the percent number, 25%. So the computer increased in price by 25%. Should have bought that computer when it was $400. I agree. Let's look at another problem. Suppose there's a sale at the local department store. 
They have recliner chairs that normally sell for $250 on sale for $175. What was the rate at which the price decreased? Since rate of decrease means percent of decrease, it's a percent problem and we're looking for the percent number. Correct. Now where did the numbers go in the formula? We have to place the difference of the two numbers in the upper left hand slot, which is $75. And we have to place the starting value into the lower left hand slot, which is $250. That's right. Always remember to place the starting number in the formula, not the larger number or the smaller number. Now we multiply 75 times 100 to get 7500. Next we divide that number by 250. And the answer to that arithmetic is 30. So the price of the chair decreased by 30%. Yes. Let me put a couple more problems up on the board and I'll let you solve them. Here's the first problem. The value of stock XYZ rose from $2.25 per share to $2.75 per share. What was the rate of increase for the stock? Who wants to do this one? I'll do it, Mr. Sleep. Because it has the words rate of increase in it, it's a percent increase problem. We use the formula and we put the rate of change in the upper left hand slot, which is 50 cents. Because that's how much it went up. We put the starting value, $2.25, in the lower left hand slot. Before we multiply and divide, we can get rid of the decimal points on the left hand side of our formula by moving the decimal point over two places in the top number and the bottom number. Now we multiply 50 times 100 to get 5,000 and divide that by 225. After dividing you get 22 and 50 225 ths The fraction part can be reduced by the common number 25 which leaves 22 and 2 ninths percent. Correct. The stock XYZ rose in value 22 and 2 ninths percent. Here's one for you Bruno. Suppose you bought a new car for $10,000, only to find that you had to sell it a year later and it was only worth $7,000. What was the rate of decrease on the value of the car? Because this problem has the phrase rate of decrease in it, that makes it a percent of decrease problem. The amount of change was $3,000 and that goes in the upper left hand side of our formula. The starting value is $10,000 and that goes in the lower left hand side of our formula. Next, we multiply 3,000 times 100 to get 300,000. Then we divide that by 10,000 to get 30. The car decreased in value by 30%. Excellent. What we've covered in this video are just two of the many ways percent problems can be presented. This should give you a solid foundation so that you can move on to other percent problems. Now let's recap what we've learned in this video. You've seen what the definition of a percent number is. You've seen how percent numbers can be rewritten as decimal numbers and fraction numbers. You also know that in a simple percent problem, you're either looking for the part, total, or percent number, or in a rate of increase or a decrease problem, you're looking for the percent of change in a particular number. I've placed some practice problems at the end of this video that you should do yourself. After I show you the problems, you should set your video machine to pause then work out the problem yourself before you look at the answers. Here's the first set of problems. In this problem, I want you to change each of these fractions to decimals, then to percents. Make sure you put your video machine to pause first and do the problems yourself before you look at the answers. In these problems, you should first change these decimal numbers to fractions, then change the decimal numbers to percents. And as in the last problems, do them first before you look at the answers. In each of these problems, you should change each of the percent numbers to decimals, then change the decimal numbers to fractions. And do each of them before you look at the answers. The next set of problems are word problems like we did previously. You should be able to figure out which numbers are present and which one is missing then use the appropriate formula, plug the numbers in, and solve for the missing one. And remember, do the problems first before you look at the answers. Here's word problem number one. At a baseball game one night, there were 35,000 fans in attendance. This represents 80% of the total number of people the ballpark can hold. How many fans can a ballpark hold altogether? 
Here's where problem number two. Ralph wants to buy a house and he is required to put a $6,000 down payment on it. The cost of the house is $60,000. His down payment represents what percent of the total cost of the house? Here's where problem number three. Jose got a 6% raise where he works. His salary before the raise was $9 per hour. How much was his raise? Here's where problem number four. The price of apples at a local grocery store went on sale from $1.25 per pound to $0.75 cents per pound. What was the rate of decrease of the apples? Here's where problem number five. Here's the last problem. The price of a gallon of gas in a certain city went from $1.60 a gallon to $2.20 a gallon in a matter of one month. What was the rate of increase of the price of gas? Here are the answers to the word problem so that you can check them. If you get any incorrect, make sure that you go over them again so that you can get a better understanding on how to solve these problems. Here's the answers to the first set of problems. These fraction numbers can be changed into these decimal numbers, which can then be changed into these percent numbers. These decimal numbers can be changed into these fraction numbers, and they can also be changed into these percent numbers. These percent numbers can first be changed into these decimals, which can then be changed into these fraction numbers. Here's the answer to word problem number one. In problem number one, the total is missing. 35,000 is the part and 80 is the percent. You multiply 35,000 times 100 to get 3,500,000. When you divide that by 80, you get 43,750, which is how many people the ballpark can hold. Here's the answer to word problem number two. In problem number two, the percent number is missing. 6,000 is a part number, and 60,000 is a total number. You multiply 6,000 times 100 to get 600,000. When you divide that number by 60,000, you get 10%, which is the percentage he had to make as a down payment on the house. Here's the answer to word problem number three. In problem number three, the part number is missing. $9 is a total number, and six is a percent number. You multiply nine times six to get 54. Now when you divide that number by 100, you're going to have to write the number inside the division house as a decimal, and since our answer is money, let's write it out to two decimal places. The answer is 54 cents. He got a 54 cent raise. Here's the answer to word problem number four. In problem number four, we have a rate of decrease problem. That means we have to use a variation of our formula. 50 cents is the amount the number decreased, which goes in the upper left-hand slot. The starting number is $1.25, which goes in the lower left-hand slot. You can move the decimal point in the 50 cent number and the $1.25 number both over to the right two places to make your arithmetic easier. 50 times 100 is 5,000. That number divided by 125 equals 40%. The price of the apples decreased by 40%. Here's the answer to word problem number five. In problem number five, we have a rate of increase problem. 60 cents is the amount the gas increased, which goes in the upper left-hand slot. The starting number was $1.60, which goes in the lower left-hand slot. Next, we can move the decimal points over two places to the right in the top number and the bottom number to get rid of them. Then multiplying 60 times 100, we get 6,000. Next, we divide that number by the other number left, which is 160 to get 37 with a fractional remainder 80 over 160. The fraction part reduces to one half, so the gas increased in price by 37.5%. Well, how did you do? I hope you got all the problems correct. And I also hope that this video has helped you to understand basic percent concepts.